Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about a new feature of Python 3.7 called the data classes. Now data classes are classes in Python, so if you're coming from an understanding of OOP object-oriented programming, they should look and behave very similarly to classes. Data classes are very useful and versatile, and especially if you're working with classes and models containing data attributes, which is rather common in the data science domains. Again, um, let me emphasize that this is new in Python 3.7, so you want to be using a version of Python that is uh, quite recent. I'm using Python 3.8, so, so this is fine. So let's get started. So earlier I said that data classes are just classes, except data classes has a lot of the basic functionality already implemented for you. So um, let's take a look at an example now that I have, I have Visual Studio Code open up. Um, let's work through a simple example and let's begin by writing our class. So let me zoom in a little bit more here and we start off by creating a class. And here we're going to create a class called email meta. So email meta is just like any other class. You can inherit from it, you can create you can inherit you can create an instance of that by inheriting inheriting from this class. Okay? Now with data classes what we're gonna do is that we're gonna first import from data classes, import data class, and then we're gonna use this decorator called data class. So this is just a Python decorator, it wraps around this function, provides additional functionalities to it. So this is the class that we're gonna write, but because we wrap them with a decorator data class, it's gonna have additional functionalities that we're gonna see in this video very soon. So um, let's go ahead and actually create this class. Um, we're going to start with a couple of things. I'm going to say that this is a data structure. It, it's a very common data structure. Um, I'm going to have in an email, uh, in, a, in a case of email, I would have a sender. I would expect that there is a sender and my sender is a string. So this is the first sort of, um, this is what the class would expect in order to create this data class. So for example, I would then have a sender in here and I would then have my email in here, for example, like that. And this, because it expects a string, it would be a string in here, right? So I'm gonna remove that. Now you don't actually have to do that. You could have done, um, I'll show you different ways of, of, of initia initializing this, but let's let's move on and uh, actually create our class first. So the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna create a subject because an email usually contains a subject line. Again, it's gonna be a string. We're gonna have a date as well. We've, uh, we're gonna create a string. Of course, you can also do from date time, import date time, and this could be a date time object, but we don't have to worry about now that now. Um, we're gonna have re recipients. recipients. Now this is gonna be a list. Now, why is that a list? Because usually when you send an email, um, you can send it to multiple recipients. So you can send it to uh, an entire division, uh, a company of three people, four people. So this could be, you know, one, two, a list of length two, length three. Um, so we're going to have it as a list. And CC, um, that's the copy. And we're also going to have it as a list because you can, of course, CC multiple uh, person on the email. And... That is pretty much, that is pretty much it. We're gonna actually go ahead and actually create a property to show you how it is essentially very similar to classes. So these are all the different things you pass in when you initial when you initialize or uh, create a new instance of the email meta class, and we're gonna create a property of this class, and this is gonna be domain. And let's see what we want to do. So what I want to do is I want to look at the sender email. So if this is, let's say, if this is, for example, Samuel at algorithm.me, if this is my email, then I want this to be extracted, right? So I want to be able to say something like em1.domain. And because this is a property, I don't have to uh, call the function. And what it would do is that you should execute this function and uh, retrieve this part of the email address, right? So let's take a look at how do we implement that. And the fastest way I can think of is I can basically do a quick check. I can say that if self.sender, so what I'm saying is that if this exists, then return, take that, and I would split. Split on what? Split on the 
uh, on this symbol and then say take the last of the symbol so for example again let's make this all more concrete so it would split and now I have I would have Samuel and I will have ugly.ma the rest of the string right and negative one basically says go and take the last item so which is this all right um, when we run this code it will become more apparent what we're trying to achieve here okay so let's uh let's before we can run the code let's actually go ahead and maybe create some fake data and dummy data and actually see this uh, working now I know you what you're thinking right now you're thinking that Sam you don't even have initialize you don't even have a uh, uh, you know the print and you don't have the 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 init um, so you would expect that I right now you would expect that I would actually have something like define init um, and I would have the self and I would have the sender subject date recipients CC you would expect me to have any of this stuff and you would then expect me to bind them right you would expect me to do all of this now we don't need this and the reason we don't need this is because I, I mentioned earlier that we wrap this with the data class um, uh, decorator and this has already provided among many other things it has provided functionalities for, for this for the initialization for the print and um, and a few other things that we'll talk about but among other things so let me let me just complete this and to show you what it looks like right so we're gonna have self dot and maybe tap this in tap this in as well and here you would expect me to have subject so this is what you would do if this is just a regular class um, so you're saying to the class is that every time some every time there is an initialization so for example here I'm initializing it then what you do is that you take the attributes that are passed to this function and you then bind them to the self which is the instance of the object itself so you would expect me to have things like that and that is how it usually works um, and we have recipients let's complete that sorry just, to, just for completion sake um, and we have CC and you would also imagine that it is rather common for a um, class to then implement the representation and again it takes self and you would then write some statement or maybe not print but instead you would say return and you would return some sort of I don't know what you want you know what whatever it is here but you would have to implement this functionality by yourself but you know what's good about data classes is that it has all of this covered for you and I, we'll see an example of this so let's go ahead and say we want to run this script directly from here so let's make sure if I run Python right now you see that I'm actually on Python 2.7 so this none of this would work so for example if I were to go ahead and try to run a Python and say dc.py this is actually I'm not even uh, yeah, change the directory to desktop so I'm in desktop right now and I go ahead and say py, python dc.py um, oh I didn't actually execute anything but let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that so if I go ahead and run from data classes import data class this will tell me that there's no module named data classes and this is to be expected right because we're not in the right version of python I told you earlier that this is a new feature in python 3.7 and above so you, you won't be able to import this. So let's get out of there. And in order to run this, let's go ahead and do our um, if name equal, equals main. So let's say that if we run the script directly, so that's directly, so directly it would have the name of main. So what do we want to do here? Now, before we can actually see some examples here, I would need to create data to fill this instance with. So I'm going to go ahead and do it really quickly. Um, so give me, a, give me a second here and we'll come back. Okay, so what I just did was I just created some, let, let's change all of this a little bit. Uh, let's get, get this Nicholas and Michael and Nicholas. And all right, so we have the, we have a dictionary email. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass this down here, right? So when we initialize, um, when we initialize this email meta, uh, 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 this class, uh, we're going to have to pass in this data. So what you can do is you can go ahead and actually type all of this in and you can say sender equals to email, sender, and so and so forth. But uh, this is probably not very, you're going to have to write this a lot. 
So what we're going to do instead is that we are going to save ourselves some time by actually doing some unpacking. So we're going to unpack the dictionary and we're going to actually do something like this instead. All right. So what this will do is that if you go ahead and um, unpack all of, the, all of the values in here and fit them. So basically what it would do, this is exactly the same as if you were to go ahead and actually do it. Um, say sender equals to sender. And then subject equals to subject and stuff, right? So this will actually have the same effect as you doing it manually, but we don't, we're gonna save ourselves some time by just do it using unpacking because this worked because um, they, they all have exactly the same sender, subject, recipients. And remember just now when I showed you about the initialization, well, I have the sender, it expect the self, so you expect self, sender, subject, recipient, CC and date. So this will actually provide all of that, okay? Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just take all of this stuff uh, and we're going to print EM1 to see that whether this works or not. We're going to try and actually have the domain. Now, notice that this is not in the dictionary that I passed in. Domain is not in the dictionary. But what we did have was, uh, is this property, right? So we said that um, this is a property. This is the function that you should execute in order to arrive at that. Okay, so with that said, this is uh this looks like it's good enough. So let's let's save the file. So I just hit command save or control save if you're on a PC, and we're gonna come back down here. Now I'm gonna initialize my environment. So I'm gonna call this uh, I have an environment, and if I show you the Python path, so this is my current Python path. If I get into it, I'm on three point eight point one, so I'm good. So let me get out of the from the Python shell and go back to my Bash shell, and let me go ahead and say Python dc.py, run it, and what do you get? Mydomain.com, right? So what it's doing is that when you execute this em1.domain, it goes in here and it splits that and it returns this result. So this is all perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look and say print em1. And let's go back to the terminal. Let's run that again. Now this is what you get, right? You have the email meta and then you have all of this. You have the sender, subject, date, recipients, cc, um, and what do you know, you have all of this without actually implementing your print. So you would expect that I would have a uh, re represent where I would have to implement this on my own. You would also, in, in, you would also expect that I have my initialize, which is uh, what we did earlier in order for it to, for this to bind, right? So in my initialize, you would expect me to have all of the sender subject date recipients you would expect expect all of this and then i would do the uh self equal self dot this equals to this and i would have to do all of this process but realize that i actually do not have any of this and it is still implemented for me so let me let me show you one more example i'm gonna comment out these two lines here and i'm gonna say email meta and look i have the init implemented for me and let's go ahead and actually say print, pass this in, run this code, you see that it has a function that you can find. And that is what I'm saying about data classes. It just takes away all of these tasks. It makes it a lot more uh, convenient for you to just create uh, objects and class uh, uh, create classes. If your classes have all of these basic functionalities, it just saves you all of those things and provide uh, uh, the, the string representation method, provide the initialization method, and you don't have to do all of this by hand. We, we spoke about the initialization method. Um, whoops, sorry. And I'm just gonna copy this down, pass it in here, tap it in. Um, I also spoke about the representation that's also implemented for you. And it also implements the equal equality check. So for example, I'm gonna show you one more example. Um, the equality. So it, it can check for, it can perform uh, object comparisons even without you implementing that functionality. So let's take a look at an example here. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy all of this email and I'm gonna put it down here. Um, I'm gonna call it email2 for example and this could really be anything and I'm gonna change the subject of the email and I'm gonna say hello from the terminal. Alright, then 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna say em1 well we're gonna copy this and change that to email2 now we're gonna pass in email2 right here as well so we have two instances em1 and em2 and we can check for the quality of them so we can say em1 equals equals em2 and let's see what it says let's run the code it says false they're not the same and the reason they're not the same is because the subject line has been changed so if this is the same for example if i were to remove this and say this um there's no email one just email right um let's run the code now you see true because they are ex exactly the same so again what it does is that it implements the um, object comparisons for you and you don't have to do that by hand and um, it's a lot of value out of the box for free right um, one other thing that a data class can do as well and uh, it's actually about the the post initialization so you can control that behavior as well so for example I could have a property here and I can have my define and I can say post init so post init basically says after initialization what do you want to do so you can actually say this, so um, let, let's go ahead and actually create a origin domain um, just to show some example and we say that this is the value, default value is none. So I can actually have the default value. So you know, suppose I want to say um, string and I want to pass in a default value, I can do that. But we're not going to worry about that now, we're just going to have string. If there is a default value, you would have to put them at the end of it. So I can do this, for example, I can say list equals to, and then I can pass in uh, my stuff here, or I can drop this here. But string equals to none, and I said that after initialization, I wanna pass in a value. So origin domain, the string shouldn't be none if uh, after the initialization phase. So let's go ahead and quickly implement this, and I'm gonna make this simple. I'm gonna say this is just basically, uh, well, we can we can use the same code here if you want to just copy the same code just to see that it works right so this post initialization it should go ahead perform this action replace the none with this action and uh just to make sure this works we could go down here right here we can remove all of this Let's say remove all of this and uncomment this and we can go ahead and origin domain copy that paste it right in here and we can expect to see the origin domain uh, working and fingers crossed if we got everything right let's go down run python dc.py and here sure enough we see that it's not instead of none we actually have the mydomain.com and it's again it's printed out correctly so those those are some other things you can do with it so it's a uh, uh, pretty interesting very useful especially if you work with uh, very data heavy um, models um, in Python. So uh, especially if you come from a data science domain, for example, this could be uh, one of the most interesting or one of the more interesting uh, features in 3.7 uh, Python. So in this, uh, in the remaining part of this series, we're gonna go cover into. We're gonna go cover some of the other features in Python 3.7, 3.8. Uh, we're gonna see some of the things that I find more useful, and we're gonna talk about them. All right. So thank you, and I uh, hope you have a productive day. Um, see you.